Now that we saw the different MXs with the VPN topologies, the VPN registry, and how the auto VPN works, now it's time to see what is a VMX. So if you go to the miraki.cisco.com trying to find what is the VMX, you will see this page. And this page basically will tell you is, this is a small virtual appliance. So we have different sizes we're going to see later on, but a VMX is the same as MX, but virtual. So you don't have a hardware, you're going to have the software and the whole logistics and the scripts, everything what an MX does, the VMX can do it. So it's going to depend on the size of the VMX that you're going to use. So you're going to have just the virtual version of any MX. And in the page, if you go scroll down, we're going to see different parts. So this is the important part as well, the documentation. There are two parts of the documentation that I would say for you to compare, to see, and decising what kind of MX you're using normally as a hardware and what is the performance or the capabilities that you need for a VMX when you use the virtual version. So this is one of the pages. It's a very long page and I would say personally very hard to understand, to read for you to find what is the information that you want because it's going to give you all the initial uh, documentation about what MX does and what are the, the latest of the greatest of the MXs. But if you are just specifically tuned to find what is the VMX, this is some information about what the MX is, the difference. So here's a comparison of the MX sizing guide, like they call it. And at the end is when you're going to find the VMXs. So the VMXs are here. So what they offer is the VMX small, medium, and large. So that's the all the supported cloud platforms that you have for all of them and the maximum side to side VPN throughput. Here, yeah, it's nice to have that table and see the difference between the three of them, but it's hard for you to understand what is the difference of the equivalent of this VMX to the hardware model. So you have to go back, go upstream here, and then trying to figure out the difference between the two. I don't like too much this specific documentation because of that. What I prefer is the MX sizing principle. So this one is the most updated, updated one that they have, and it's from February 2022. So it's the most latest one. So here you have a better overview to understand, oh, this is the same as the Maxis. It's virtual. That's why you don't have those check boxes. You don't have one fiber connectivity because it's virtual, and you don't need a dual power supply because it's virtual. And the form factor is virtual. But at least you have a more understanding about all the available MXs and what is the reference for the VMXs in that stage. And the ne next page is going to give you that as well with more information about these parts. We know it's a small, so that's not, it's not taking consideration. And this is the part that you can say, oh, I understand now. The VMX is small, it's 200 meg. So it's roughly something between this MX64 and 67. Okay, I get it. So the 500. MEC is the MAC VMX medium, so we can say it's roughly the same as the MX75. And the VMX large is one gig, so you can see, yeah, it's more or less MX155. And then based on this, you understand more or less the position. So if you're used to go to MX105 or 100, and you want to have the same capabilities then as a, v, as a virtual MX, you know that you cannot take the VMX small or even the medium. So you need, at least if that's the throughput that you need, you need a VMX large. So with that, you understand and have the sizing to see what kind of VMX is what you need. Now that you have that, they say, okay, so where I'm going to deploy that VMX? You have more documentation that you can go over it. It's not very useful for the conversation that we have now, is to understand what an MX and SD1 appliance does. And this one is to understand what is this Comoraki out of everything else. And that's it's not part of our conversation now. To understand then what kind of methods or places you can deploy this VMX, you can continue scrolling down and it's going to give you all the clouds, all the different places where you can use this VMX. You have the AWS. So if you click here, you will see information for AWS specifically, how to purchase it. The same for Azure. So these are the two main. You go here, you will see the Azure marketplace, Google platform, same information, more info. You're going to see the information from the Google platform. Alibaba, the same. Alibaba or Alibaba, depending on where you're from. So you can see all the information. And then the private cloud. So you have the public clouds where you can purchase from their own marketplace. So you don't have to go to a specific Mirac and then do all the transactions for the license you would have to, but not for a specific 
uh, software-based version where you have the private cloud. At the moment, as you can see, the private cloud can run in Cisco and FBIS. So it's just in that platform that is available at this moment where I'm recording this video. Probably in the future, when you can see that, you say, oh, it's, it's will probably be able to do in VMware or other platforms, but at the moment, you can run just in Cisco and FBIS. After that, you cannot see too much. So then you say and decide at this moment, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run in Microsoft Azure because, because that's what you want. So here, what you have is the information of the marketplace. So you don't have any guidelines on how to deploy it. And that's why it comes to place now if we go to the documentation of Cisco Meraki. So if we, we go docsmeraki.com, here, let's put VMX. And then you have all the different guidelines. So if you want to use an FBIS, there you have it. So that's the guidelines for everything, how to deploy it, how to implement. So in the documentation is where you're going to type a VMX and see all the guidelines. If you say it's AWS, there you have it. You have all the information. Since we mentioned that we want to deploy in Microsoft Azure, here you have the documentation. And it's very updated. You have the table of contents to one by one, the steps, what that means, how to do it, the topology, the different considerations in the configuration, how that's going to talk to everybody, and so on, and so on, and so on. So the first part is, if we go back first, understand if you need a VMX or not. So if you're watching this video, probably it's because you need it to understand it. Then go to the sizing to go and see, okay, so this is what I need. So this is a VMX, small, medium, or large. And then which one I'm gonna use to deploy, which platform, let's say Microsoft Azure. Okay, so let me go to the documentation and understand what are the components, the architecture, the best practice, the consideration, and the caveats of using Microsoft Azure in installation for the VMX. And then that's how you, you have the full picture of a VMX. Is the virtual version of the Max, depending on the capabilities that you want to use.